Hi, so today we are at Coach and we're going to be doing some metabolic testing. I've got the Cambodia Half Marathon and the Paris Marathon coming up and I want to increase my speed. I want to learn a little bit more about my optimal heart rate for training and how best to fuel my runs. How I prepared for today's session? No excessive exercise yesterday, no exercise today, even though I did do a small walk this morning and then no eating for the last six hours. So I had a massive breakfast, big protein shake, bagel, avocado, eggs, but I haven't eaten since 10 o'clock. I am starving. So pretty excited to get this over and done with so I can eat something. Come on, let's go. Hi, Jim. Tell us a little bit about Coach. Coached primarily is an online coaching company that helps runners and triathletes optimize, track, and enjoy their training. Though where we are here, as you can tell, is the sports science lab. All we do here is help people optimize their performance, and that can be done in a handful of ways. So the run lactate test is the most popular test we do because by establishing how well you produce in clear lactate, that allows us to identify how aerobically and anaerobically fit you are and give you more accurate heart rate uh, and pace training zones. We then follow that up with a metabolic test because within those training zones, which is easy, steady, mod hard, hard and very hard, we want to know exactly how your body derives energy. The test today, once we're done, you're going to be able to see within that kind of easy to very hard, how much fat your body burns in relation to carbohydrates. The only other test I would want to mention would be the sweat test, which you've already done, which is more important in terms of helping you optimize your hydration. So by taking a sample of your sweat, we can analyze that. And what we're looking for there is the genetic amount of sodium you lose per yeah. liter of sweat. And being in Singapore, it's always hot, it's always humid. You don't stop sweating, right? Yeah, but if you remember though, I actually don't sweat a huge amount. Like, so Luckily. When, yeah, when I run, yeah. but it turns out I was losing a lot of salt. I think all the salt tabs that I started using after our session helped massively, and I still use them today. Because you you definitely fall into the bracket of people who underestimate through no fault of their own just how much they lose. And that's what the test really helps to highlight for people is Still, you might not necessarily sweat that much, but some people can rank quite high on the genetic spectrum, therefore losing easily over 900 milligrams of sodium per liter, which once again in this climate is respectable. And if you're running a marathon for at least four hours, yeah. that's a long enough time for that to impact you. And it's always the mid to back end where you're gonna suffer the most. And so the sweat test is all about optimizing your hydration for both training, as well as of course race day so that you can run a faster time. And that's one of the biggest things that I think can really help bring people's times down. It's yeah. massively underestimated. Lactate testing, metabolic testing, sweat testing, those would be the trifecta, I like to call it, that I'd advise any semi-serious runner, enthusiast, or triathlete to you know, take up. You're not the only person who comes to us, as you can imagine, to yeah. cut race times, not corners, <laughs> hence our slogan. And so, there's a few things that as a sports scientist I would want to kind of pick on and, and start with to see that time drop because as I'm sure you can imagine we're very inefficient as human beings. There's a lot of things that we tend to drop the ball on but most people tend to think that naturally it's the training that's the problem but actually more often than not people are doing more or less the right thing. Maybe they need some fine tuning with training zones which is a good example. More often than not actually it's the other 23 hours in the day right because training realistically if we're honest with ourselves is maybe an hour a day if we're training every day but there's a lot more else to account for and so when we start to you know run people through tests but discuss that part very quickly do people realize that oh yeah okay maybe i'm not getting enough sleep or oh, i should be having less sugar or <laughs> you know what i mean and then yeah. when they start to correct for that which is a more holistic approach adjacent to their training things start to build momentum again and that four hours and eight minute marathon might start to get faster and faster. The metabolic test today, let's talk about the protocol. Yeah. It's real simple actually. All I need to do is calibrate the machine. Once the metalizer is calibrated, what I need to do is find the right mask size for you and we'll mask you up yeah. and then we'll actually conduct the test itself. And the protocol is simple. We're going to have you walk for one minute at just a fixed speed. And then after that minute, I'm going to have the, the protocol jump the speed up to what I deem to be still very comfortable for you, yeah. but then gradually just get faster as time goes on. So incline remains at one and a half percent to simulate the road but we're adding stress to the body through an increase in speed. And that way we can see how things transition. As far as how long you're on the treadmill for, because that's the most common question, because most people don't like to run on treadmills. Yeah. Most I think we'll probably end up doing is around 12 minutes. So it's not oh. that long. So it's a relatively short, but quite sharp okay. increase in speed. And the test will be officially over when I no longer see you burning any traces of fat because carbohydrate would have 
taken over. And hopefully that doesn't happen too soon. If, if so, <laughs> hope not. then we've got some work to do and we'll yeah. discuss afterwards how we can help reduce that overall uh, dependency on carbohydrates. Because awesome. there's a reason why we don't want to be too dependent on it, but I'll save that for after. Okay, great. Sound awesome. Good? Yeah, I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right then. First up, Jim put a heart rate monitor on my arm to track my heart rate during the test. All right, good. So that should help pick us up the heart rate. This is where I connect the heart rate monitor. Make sure all this tech talks to one another. Can you cheat the test? No, God, no. <laughs> no, if anything, it's the opposite. It's very yeah. easy to fail the test. If you come in and you're not in a fasted state and you've had some kind of sugar or food in your system that spikes insulin and insulin will therefore suppress any fat burning you have going on. So the data we collect will be all suppressed and it'll just show massive dependency on carbs and therefore it's not a fair reflection of probably what you could do okay. in a more fasted state. We discussed what a top speed would be for me and decided the test would start with a walk for one minute and then start running at around seven kilometers an hour and gradually increase until around 12 to 13 kilometers an hour. I asked how long the test would take. Ideally somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes is kind of where we'd want to be for the test to end. Cause I don't want to have you on there too long. Okay, but just long enough for us to get a low to high intensity reflection. Okay. Next came the mask fitting. Jim chose a small mask and we tested the fit. We needed to make sure no air was coming out of the sides and there were lots of adjustments to make sure the fit was correct. At this point, the mask felt a little strange but completely comfortable to wear. Rule one is to not speak. If you talk, it's going to fluctuate the O2 and CO2 because of obviously the speaking. So if I ask how you're doing, just give me a good thumbs up, okay? That's hard. If yep. there's any issues at all, of course, straddle the treadmill immediately and then I'll stop everything and then I can take the mask off. So as I started to run, I found it really hard to breathe. I think it wasn't actually hard to breathe, but with the mask, it felt really restricted and a little bit claustrophobic. When you think about your breath, it loses all rhythm. Eventually, I managed to relax into it. As the speed increased, Jim asked how I was doing. I pointed to a four out of 10. Everything felt good as the speed increased. And as things got a little bit faster, Jim asked again how I was doing. This time it was kind of a seven out of 10. At around 13 kilometers an hour, that was when my fat burning became zero and I was only using carbohydrates for fuel. And this is when it was time to stop. Get ready to straddle the treadmill. Five, four, three, two, hands on the bars. Good. Let me unhook you. Well done. And there we go. Come over there. There we are. How was that? Yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah, a little bit, right? I know. It's not the most enjoyable thing in the world to wear, but all in the name of science, eh? How do you think you did? So first of all, it was really claustrophobic. It's a bit like when you're scuba diving and you mm. think about your breathing, then mm -hmm. you end up messing it up and throwing mm -hmm. off your buoyancy. Mm -hmm. I felt that feeling. Well, good news, it doesn't change anything. Oh, right, like, okay. <laughs> as long as you're breathing in and out through your mouth and okay. we can pick up that, then we're collecting everything we need. Okay, so it yeah. doesn't matter if I was like panting or like breathing heavier. No, because okay. this is the thing, whether you like it or not, just how your body responds through its breathing frequency is in reflection of the stress you're under. Okay. You may have amplified it slightly at the start through nerves and like you say, through wearing the mask, but we smooth the data out anyway, every time. Because yeah. um, you know, people cough and splutter, yeah. that spikes the data. So just to eliminate any risk of like, skewing the data we smooth it all out so okay no no cause for concern don't okay. worry with this graph here i want to walk you through it you can see that along this bottom axis this is the time so from the start to the end of the test yeah. you can see the orange line here is reflecting how much fat your body was burning in grams per hour in relation to this blue line which is carbohydrates we're looking at three things one fat max two your crossover point and three where everything completely tapers off and you're burning nothing but carbohydrate to start with fat max you can see yourself that happened right here it's quite oh, evident so early it's very much what we call a peak yeah. as opposed to what we'd ideally want to see which is a, a tabletop so you can see that from the get-go this orange light box is where you were walking yeah and then we went up to 7k an hour and things just gradually got faster from there but keep in mind fat max is expected to happen in your zone one or what's considered yeah. to be easy because that's where there's the highest presence of oxygen in relation to carbon dioxide because there's two points here how much fat are we burning that's one and then once again how long does it last is another the maximum amount of fat you were burning was 36 grams of fat per hour. Now, okay. what does that mean? Someone who's deemed fat adapted can burn up to 60. Wow, okay. Okay, or a gram per minute. So if we can, I'd say, consider you to be 24 grams shy, is my math correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> 
we've got some room for growth. Yeah. But as you can see, it's not just 36 grams, but it's very short lived 36 yeah. grams. It does not take long before things start to taper off because yeah. carbohydrate is starting to pick up. Yeah. Now the second point, as you can see, is what we call the crossover point. Now that happened right here, which was at a heart rate of 148 beats per minute yeah. and at a speed of 9.2 kilometers per hour. Now remind me, what is your desired race pace? I wanted to get under four hours. So a 358 would require you to run 540 per K. That's without stopping. That would mean you'd have to run 10.6 kilometers per hour. We would like to move this as much as we can towards your desired race pace. Yeah. Because it's at this point or the crossover point where you are 50-50 between yeah. getting your energy from fats as well as carbs. Now, if I just highlight the carbohydrate output, you're burning 74 grams of carbs per hour. Yeah. Now, if you run for four hours, times that by four, you know your overall glycogen or carb output. As far as the, and this is the golden rule of thumb, by the way, this is one of my key tips for today. I would encourage you to try and match your body weight in grams of carbs per hour, right? Okay. So you know your body weight. So my weight's like 47. Okay. Now, with that being said, do you yeah. match that every hour in terms of carbohydrates? No. Right, so your oh intake is much lower and your output is 76 grams, let's just say, at this uh, point here. Yeah. You can quickly see how as one, two, three hours go by, that uh, uh, carbohydrate deficit is only gonna get bigger and bigger and yeah. cause you more and more problems. Yeah. The goal should be to close that up, that gap as much as possible before even race day rolls around and yeah. bring this dependency down so that you don't have to be as uh, you know, dependent on gels or yeah. any form of carbohydrate intake. Yeah. But the sad truth of the matter is, most of us are a little bit more carbohydrate dependent. Therefore, if you were to try to go about running a marathon, you might have to work a little harder to get that back in your system. Yeah. After your crossover point, what's really good about this is that it took a while for fat burning to taper off. And that's a reflection of someone's aerobic fitness. So actually, the fact that it took a while to actually come all the way down to zero is a good thing. And it gives me confidence that actually, even if you were to push the limit a little bit and go beyond that 50-50 split, yeah. <clears throat> as you can see, it takes a while for it to start to really get sharper and sharper. You should be able to perform relatively well. So okay. that's a good thing. And if you're curious to know the, the hardcore numbers, you officially were burning nothing but carbohydrate at 12 and a half kilometers an hour and your heart rate was 172 beats per minute, okay? And the most amount of carbs at that point was 154 grams per hour. Not sustainable for a marathon, absolutely. No. Not, not, <laughs> not yet, but that gives yeah. you a rough idea as to kind of fat max crossover point and completely anaerobic, what your body's like, looking like. So the goal with these three data points, with this, these tests is to move them up. I would like to move your fat max to a higher volume of fat, but also at a higher output therefore pushing your crossover point to a higher speed, and therefore once again pushing where you taper off entirely to a higher speed. Yeah. That's always the objective here. How we do that is like I say, your nutrition, training, sleep and stress. Let's touch on nutrition. What's your breakfast, lunch and dinner like? Breakfast will always be something savory, almost always eggs. Other things I like to eat are big egg white omelets, frittatas. If I have an omelet, it'll be kind of like loaded with veggies. Mm -hmm. Lunch will be anything from like whole wheat pasta, rice, some sort of grain. I'll normally aim for like 30 grams of protein, maybe more at lunchtime. Turkey breast, leftover steak, leftover meatballs, um, loads and loads of veggies. Mid-afternoon, I get a bit of a slump where I get hungry and I crave the sweet things. If I'm being good, I'm really focused on what I'm eating. I will have something like a protein yogurt, maybe a protein shake. If I'm not being so good, I will have some ice cream or a chocolate bar or mm. something like that. Evenings are a real mix. Earlier on in the week, we'll have things like grilled chicken, and salad and veggies or grilled fish and then as the kind of week goes on it tends to be more like okay let's get spaghetti and meatballs in mm. there i will always have a side of salad or vegetables with mm -hmm. my evening meal okay well if that's the case uh you're an easy fix there's a handful of things there that are probably more processed than others but it's inherently fairly organic however even like whole wheat pasta bread and so on these are still considered refined carbs and what you're consistently doing throughout the day, albeit not excessively, but each time you are consuming these types of foods, you're spiking your insulin. Yeah. And it's the consistency of that which we want to pay most attention to. Now, I want to put a lot of emphasis around the fact that carbs are not the enemy. If I ask you in a 24-hour window how much time you're under this much stress, how much would it equate to be? Probably one to two hours. Right. 
Whereas what you're doing is you're eating in the opposite to that. Small but frequent doses of carbs that would reflect as if you are consistently under stress. And so we need to flip the script, okay? Because 23 hours of your day, you live here. Yeah. At the start of the test where you are the most sedentary, where you may be walking around, sitting down, you're under no form of physical stress. And if you let your body do what it wants to do, it will happily burn and tick over and metabolize fat for fuel. Because yeah. we have an abundance of fat cells ready and waiting. We just have to let our hormones regulate to allow that process to occur, okay? Yeah. But the second you have any form of sugar that you consume, your body will have to register that because sugar if left in our bloodstream is toxic. Spike insulin, which is the hormone that regulates that to store it in our muscles and liver, and at the same time, therefore, suppress your ability to burn fat until that regulates again. If we're training here, breakfast is warranted. We need to remove sugar and refine carbs for the remainder of the day. Certainly if we're living here, and when our body can happily tick over and burn fat, okay? Yeah. At least if you were to do this, your insulin would stay lower for the second half of the day and increase that what was only a six to eight hour window of burning fat to anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. We take out the refined carbs, but we need to repl replace them with healthy fats. So we're opting for a more healthy fat, protein, and non-refined carb approach. So okay. vegetables are the non-refined kind, yeah. which you're already ticking, which is yeah. great. So just running carbs the night before. Right, the only time I would encourage you to do that sort of approach, which you could define as carb loading, mm -hmm. would be around races or around any race specific training sessions. Yeah. I would rather you go into every training session in a fasted state so that you can keep your insulin low, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with you immediately from the time you start to put back any form of fuel that you think you're tapping into. As long as you're doing a good amount of aerobic work, you should have peace of mind knowing that your body is naturally more tapping into fat than it is carbohydrate and it's manageable. So you shouldn't need to, the night before, eat a load of carbohydrate to be safe for the next session. So when it comes to the training now, you should be doing a lot of time spending building and continuing to build this aerobic fitness. Yeah. That would be defined as training at your aerobic threshold and below, also known as high steady and below. If I was to look at the metabolic data, I would basically highlight where your uh, crossover point is. That would be your ceiling and spend a lot of time at and below that point. So at and below, at and below. no, at and below where we're okay. burning more, more fat than carbs. So for you right now, that's 150 beats per minute. And in, this, in the lab, at least, you were running at 9.3 kilometers an hour. Now, I understand if I throw you outside in Singapore and ask you to run 154 beats per minute, your speed will not be the same because yeah. we're in a controlled environment here. So output will be subjective, but use heart rate to reflect stress to accommodate for the heat, humidity, dehydration, lack of sleep, and so on. Yeah. It's going to reinforce keeping a lid on that stress. So no higher than 150. To make sure that you continue to develop and build this aerobic fitness. Okay. Lactate clearance is one side of the coin. Lactate tolerance is another, which you are definitely ticking the box for. You can, you're doing your strength training, which is one format. Yeah. Speed runs, hopefully you're doing a proper speed run each week, and then running hills. Yeah. Hard to come by here, I know. Oh, we've it's got a good one on Sentosa. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah. make sure you do your hill repeats or you yeah. add hills into the mix, and that should accommodate for both developing the slow twitch and aerobic work, and the other end of the spectrum, which is fast twitch and anaerobic work. All right, yeah. polarize your training, use the heart rate for the aerobic work, pace for the anaerobic work, and we're maximizing on our time. Awesome. As far as sleep is concerned, don't be shy about getting as much as possible because at the end of the day, all, all training does is, is stress the body out. You tear muscle fibers, inflammation, and so on. It's when you stop training that you, are, you actually bounce back and become a better athlete. It's not the training itself where you get better, you actually get worse effectively. Right, so really prioritize your sleep. That's just an inside look as to where you're at right now. Awesome. There's a lot of things you can start to implement already to make this more efficient and increase your natural ability to burn fat. But in order of priority, it should always be on a day-to-day -day basis, how is your nutrition looking like? Yeah. What is your structure to your training? Is that optimal? And every night you're getting enough sleep and therefore being as relaxed and stress-free as we can be. Okay. Okay. Yeah, got it. I'm excited to see the report. Um, yeah. I'm excited to get going now as well. Thank you so much, Jim. You're welcome. I really appreciate it, and I'm very excited to start putting some of this into practice, see if I can improve. Wonderful. Awesome. I hope you found today really helpful. I've linked Coached below. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. And if you want to follow my training, subscribe. And uh, I'm going to be posting a few more videos about how I'm getting on and how these different international marathons are going. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.